Some of you, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we got a few. Hey, let's do this. We're so glad you're with us today. We'd like to welcome you to Mount Vale Church of God. Good to have you. Let's get. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome, Mount Vale. So glad you're with us. So glad to have you. Those that are watching live stream and Facebook, glad that you're watching with us this morning. It is good to be. The Bible said, let us rejoice in the Lord. Amen. For this is the day he made. Amen. So if you can, let's stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Michelle, or, yeah, Michelle's coming. Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. With that being said, um, God laid on my heart a few weeks, few weeks ago with all the commotion that we're having right now in our cities and towns. He put on my heart to get a group to go down to Marstown City Hall and gather in unity and pray whether it be our officers, our EMS workers, or just our town. But I would like to invite everybody to come out tomorrow at 6 p.m. I would love to see everyone to join in with me during this time. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. If, if y'all didn't catch all that, uh, trying to meet down at Morristown City Hall, at 6 o'clock, is that right, Michelle? 6 o'clock. She, she ain't used to talking in front of people. She made a beeline to the back. I had to run her down. <laughs> so if you'd like to be part of that, please join them down there at 6 o'clock. It's a time of prayer, praying for our city, praying for, for anybody and everybody, especially our police departments and our EMS workers and things of that nature, okay? So with all that said, just a few quick announcements. We're going to pray. We're going to get into the Word. If you're a visitor here today, there's some ladies walking around with red shirts on. If you've got any questions about Mount Vale or you need a, a class or anything you're in, or interested in, please check with them. We also have our children's church going on right now, ages from 6 to 12. And we also have our 3 to 5 class. If you got any questions, see them. If you haven't seen our FIT team, our Welcome Center out in the foyer, please uh, check out there. If you're a new visitor, they have a gift for you if you haven't got it already. So please uh, check out with them. Sheriff, how many you got this morning? You got 18. Sheriff's got 18 KJs. If we can, let's give him a little help this morning. If you're a visitor, let's give him a hand. I mean, if you're a visitor this morning, what that is is, is this building you see, I would say 90% or at least a good percentage of that money that you see here today that built this building come through our KJs. If you got a dollar, it's got a K or a J. Where's Jerry? I was going to get him this morning. He called it King James, but it's really K for a king and J for a Jesus. So if you got, hey, Sheriff would take 20s, 5s, 100s, you don't care. It don't even have to have a K on it, but if you can, help him out there a little bit. That's how we built this building. This building you're standing in today is debt free, amen, because of men and women like you who gave into the kingdom of God, amen. So let's pray. Let's invite God into this service. How many's come to worship the Lord this morning? All right. Got a few of us, amen. Praise the Lord. Let me let me say this about worship real quick. I learned some things. How many, how many know you're never too old to learn? Can I say this? If you ever become unteachable, you're in trouble, especially spiritually. You become in, in trouble. But the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And, and I'm going to do a little series, not in, maybe not here, but maybe on our coffee and the word in the morning about worship. Those words enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In the Hebrew, they mean a lot of different things than what we think about. One of the words, and, and, and I believe I can't pronounce them and I don't want to butcher them, but one is to go in with hands lifted high, amen. One is to spin about, if you will. One is to give a clap offering. So our worship is more than just standing there in a solemn look. Come on. When he's talking about entering into his gates with thanksgiving in his courts of praise, he's talking about enter in with jubilation in your heart, with lifted hands, with a clap offering, with a shout of the voice of triumph. So right now, before we pray, let's do this. 
Let's just get loosened up this morning. Somebody give the Lord a praise this morning. Somebody give him a clap offering. He said, clap unto the Lord, all you people. Somebody give a shout, a voice of triumph, a voice of victory. How many has been set free in this place? Ought to give him a shout this morning. Woo! Glory. I'm all, I, I, I can't help it. I like it. So let's pray. Let's invite God into this house, and let's get into our worship service this morning. Father, we come to you today, God giving you thanksgiving and praise, Lord. We thank you for the men and women who have come out to worship your name, God. We thank you, God, for your bountiful blessings in this place, God, that each and every one of us got up this morning, God, and was able to come to this house to give you praise and to give you honor and to give you worship, Father, Lord. Lord, we ask you that you will inhabit the praises of your people. We ask you, God, that you will anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastors. He brings forth the word this morning, God. Anoint your word and let it go forth and do its work in this house this morning God save sanctify fill with the Holy Ghost heal deliver strengthen encourage and set free in this place God do mighty acts mighty wonders mighty miracles and amongst your people Father Lord and Lord we ask it all right now in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody said I heard an old old story how the Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious love told me. Then I repented of my sin, won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my for the blood. Amen. Woo. Praise the Lord. You may be seated just for a moment. If our ushers are getting ready, we're going to receive our tithes and offering this morning. How many know it's blessed to give? Come on now. The Bible said if you'll give, it'll be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And, that, and we think about that a lot of times, but the first thing is, is you got to give. You can't, it can't be blessed and, and running over unless you give first. And and there's a lot of ways we can give. You can see up there. You can give online. You can text to give. You can give here in the offering. We've got our church center app. we got all kinds of ways to give. So uh, don't forget, also, we're taking up a, a fundraiser, if you will, for our, our one of our district pastors. And it's all a big surprise and a secret in case somebody's watching online and knows them. But if you still want to be part of that and give, you can go to the kiosk. There's a, a button there. You can go to the church center app. There's a button there. Or if you just want to give, write it on an envelope and say, hey, this is for the district opportunity to give. Uh, please help us in doing that. It's going to be a great cause and a great need. And uh, so don't forget that. So with all that being said, let's stand. 
I like one, one old guy, and I like to bark and say it a lot. You can get to your wallet a lot easier if you're standing. <laughs> we give you some exercise here if you don't know. We'll have you sit and stand, sit and stand. You get your workout in before you get out. But uh, let's do this. Let's get our tithes. Let's get our offerings. Let's present them unto the Lord, and let's pray over them this morning. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you, God for all that you're doing in this house. We thank you for the blessing you're bestowing upon your people, Father God. And God, we ask you to take these offerings and take these tithes, God, and bless them for the building of your kingdom, Father God, that people have come into this house and through ministries outside this house, and they will come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Father Lord. And God, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver this morning as they come and bring their tithes and bring their offerings unto you, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Welcome to Mount Mel Church, a healing church for a hurting world. My name is Lisa Norton. On behalf of Pastor T.H. Farrell and the Mount Mel staff, we would like to welcome all guests and visitors. Please stop by the Connections desk for an exclusive welcome gift just for you. We are so excited to be back inside the church, worshiping together as a body of believers who love God, believes in reaching people, God's heart, and His purpose for our lives. Now, please check out these upcoming happenings. Every Wednesday, grab yourself some coffee and the Word of God and join Assistant Pastor Philip Ruth for the new weekly interactive Bible study on Facebook Live at 8 a.m. The Bible study will be in an open forum where you can interact, ask questions, and participate in the discussions. Again, that is every Wednesday at 8 a.m. on Facebook Live. Unashamed Children's Ministries will host What's Controlling You? Children's Revival on July the 9th, 10th, and 11th at 6 p.m. nightly. Prizes will be given away each night and there will be a pizza party the last night. To purchase your t-shirts, hats, tumblers, or decals, check with the Connections desk. All of the proceeds for the sale of this merchandise will go toward the expenses for Mount Bell's second annual camp meeting which will be held beginning the week of August the 9th. The lineup of guest speakers include Dr. Timothy Hill, Dr. William Butler, Pastor Tommy Bates, Bishop Douglas Small, Administrative Bishop Wayne Doherty, Pastor Teresa Arwood, and Bishop Mike Addison. To continue following what the Mount Bell is doing, you can like and follow us on social media or visit us on the web at mtbellcog.net or grab a church bulletin. Just remember, we're saving you a seat, and until next time, God bless. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> if you didn't get all that, you can check our website. You can check our bulletin. Uh, you may be seated for a moment. We're going to change the order of service just for a moment. We've got a special uh, thing we're going to do uh, here uh, shortly. And uh, so... Uh, trying to think I, I missed how many missed Brian up there in, 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 in his commercial part amen I did too I said what happened I like that I can't do that what is that and was that a wrestler thing or was that a... Arnold Schwartz <laughs> see I missed it completely so but I liked it amen <laughs> oh he's gonna pump you up like I don't know what he, <laughs> he's trying to sell something Oh, I'm sorry. How many know we can have a little fun this morning? Amen. All right. If you can, let's make our pastors welcome. Our pastor welcome as he's coming this morning. Praise the Lord. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give all of our guests and visitors a good one. Welcome. So good to see you this morning. Amen. Uh, at this time, we're going to have a baby dedication. And all that's involved in the baby dedication, if you would, please come up here on the stage. Amen. Would you please come? Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I actually forgot to put this in my uh, iPad, but I, I like one scripture, and I'll have it time they get here. Praise the Lord. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. All right. I don't know how long... Uh, Brother John and Sister Virginia have been coming to this church. How long have you guys been coming here? So move over here and over this way. Everybody say how pretty y'all are. How about 20 years? Been coming here 20 years. 
Amazing. Can you give God a good praise for that? And on the other side, we have the grandparents right there. Uh, they, uh, how long have you, we been affiliated? We, y'all went on the other side of the world and preached and 2007, amen, Homer and Teresa has been coming here what time they weren't pastoring, amen, I think we ought to give them a big hand. If you got us, so mom and daddy, we're going we're gonna to do our best to do social distancing, okay, because we don't want to get anybody sick, especially not the baby, but y'all come right here in the front, bring the baby, tell them the baby's name. Judah Gabriel Mills. Judah Gabriel Mills, that's right there on behind you. Okay, how are we going to divide this up, fellas? I know grandpas, I'm going to get to grandpas, and anybody else that wants to read scripture, We've got a whole bunch of scriptures. You did last time, right? Who wants to go first? Well, home of their point. <laughs> I got the scriptures up here if you need them. I got them right. I got them right here. You got a scripture you want to read? Okay. All right. I, I want to say this right here before we get started reading the scriptures. Uh, a baby dedication in no wise imparts salvation unto the child, but what it is is a commitment on behalf of the people and the family and the church to say we're going to raise this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. This is a commitment on our part to say when this baby grows up, it's going to know it's going it's going to have everything that it needs to know how to be saved and serve the Lord for the rest of its life. Can we give God a good praise for that? Amen. All right. Go ahead. All righty. Good morning, Mount Bell family. How are you this morning? Good. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. So glad to be out to worship with you this morning. Psalms 127 verse 3 says, Lo, children, are an inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Amen. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Psalms 139 says, For thou hast possessed my rhymes, those hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth very well. Beautiful words, and just like Pastor said, this in no parts, in no way imparts salvation to the child. What this means is we as a family, we as mamas, we as daddies, we as grandparents, we make a vow and a promise before the Lord. And not only before the Lord, but before the church. That we're going to raise this child with the best intent, with the best effort, with our best energy, with everything in us. We're going to raise this child to know and love the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yes, give him praise. Amen? Deuteronomy, I want to throw this one in here. Deuteronomy 6. I'm going to read verses 4 through 7. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. This is our requirements right here. If you want to know what our requirements are as a, as a family to our children, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall you shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lay down, and when you rise up. That means at every waking minute, at every opportunity that you have as a child of God, you should be telling your children and your children's children and your children's children's children every opportunity that you have to tell somebody about Jesus. I don't care if it's my children, your children, somebody tell somebody's child about the goodness of God. Has God been good to you? God's been good to me. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Praise the Lord. Can you give the Lord a good hand for that? Brother John, you're next. Where'd you leave off, brother? Did you get them all? Which one, where'd you leave us off at? Right there where you stopped reading, that's what I thought. Okay, right here. All right. Man, amen. First Samuel 127. I think he read that one. I think. You didn't read it? Okay. 
from right here down, brother. That's you. You got it? Yeah. Aren't we proud of the grandpas? Amen. Isn't that awesome? First, I just want to say that we're all thankful for another addition to our family the Lord's blessed us with. Uh, 1 Samuel 1, 27, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. Verse 28 says, Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And we feel the same way. This child is a gift from the Lord. And as already been said, we're all going to do our best to raise him to work, to know the Lord. Um, Jeremiah what, 20, <coughs> excuse me, 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. James 1 and 17 also says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And the Lord is good. We all know that. And again, we're just thankful for this gift in this child from the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a good hand. Stand with me all over the building, please. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hand this way, and let's pray that God's protection and grace and blessings be on this child all the days of its life. Father, we bless you. I'm so thankful, Lord, for little Judah Gabriel. Lord, we're asking you, Lord, right now that you would move by the power of your spirit on this child. Lord, don't ever let this baby go the way of the world and serve the things of the flesh, but God, let this baby seek the things of the Spirit all the days of its life, God. From a young age, Lord, let little Gabriel come to know you, Lord, and let little, little Judah Gabriel, Lord, let him serve you all the days of his life, God. May many souls come into the kingdom of God because of this child, Lord, and this family. God, help us to ever be true to these commitments that we will raise this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And God, I just pray, Lord, that the anointing of God, Lord, that's on the grandfathers and on the grandmothers and Lord, on the family members, be transferred into this baby, Lord, today. And, God, that it would have a spirit of faithfulness, God, as I know that his parents and grandparents have, God. We commit him into your hands. Look to you and to God be the glory for all that's accomplished in this young life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, let's give God a good praise. We usually do handshaking, but we're not going to do that today because of obvious reasons. But make sure you congratulate this family on this beautiful addition to the family and to our church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. Can we give them one more hand as they as they go to their seats? It's a good thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, woo, now, how about you give the Lord a good hand? Has He been good to you today? Has He been good to you this week? Did He wake you up this morning? Did He put food on your table? You got clothes on your back. You got a roof over your head. Somebody give him a little praise this morning. Somebody take a moment. Let's take the next few seconds. We're going to worship, but let's start now. Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving. Somebody thank him for something today. My Lord. Woo. My, my, my. Go ahead, brother, sister.
and heroes, come on, in glory, in glory with all power, with all power and, authority, and authority, and he conquered, and he conquered my, enemies, my enemies, and he put them, he put them heroes, in glory, in glory, with all power, all power and authority, and he conquered my enemies, and he put them. Wider than snow, amen. I went down to the crimson river, there my burdens on the shore. I went down a sinner and I came up a saint, died with Christ. Now I'm reborn. How many of you are reborn this morning? Yes. Yes, you wash me in his mercy, and he cleansed me with his blood. Now I stand complete. I have been set free. I found life there in the flood. Come on, let's sing it now. Not the same. I've been changed. Come on, sing it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By His grace. By His grace. Oh, yeah. I am saved. I'm saved. His child forever I am. Oh, hallelujah. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. been satisfied by the precious blood of Christ. Come on, let's sing it again. Yeah. Come on now. forever word. 
worship Christ. Come on, sing it. Forever worship. We're going to forever worship Him. Sing it now. And the word of our testimony. Come on, sing it again. We overcome. Oh, yeah. Sing it now. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, and the word of our testimony. And the word. Oh, yes. We overcome. Come on, sing it now. Lift your voice, yeah. We overcome the word of our testimony. in the word. Who oh, we overcome by the blood. We overcome by the We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome. Yeah. We overcome. We overcome. Oh by yeah. And the word of our testimony. One more time. And the word of our testimony. We overcome. We overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our Hey! 
second amen let's give the lord a good hand clap of praise i want him to sing that again but i want to i want to read a little scripture that the lord illuminated to me just the other day amen how many believe he's alive today i believe he's alive and well today come on somebody praise the lord he's very much alive amen how do you know he lives pastor he lives within my heart amen praise the lord we've been preaching for a while out of uh we've been preaching for a while out of mark 16 and i'm not going to preach out there today but lord willing i'm going to preach there tonight but i wanted to show you something uh in the great commission we've been preaching on and these signs shall follow them that believe and we've been preaching a lot on uh the power of the believer but mark 16 and 14 look what it said it said afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me 
Look what it said. He upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He was upset with his disciples because they had already been told. Somebody came and said, I come to tell you that he is alive and well. And they didn't believe it. Amen. And you know something I want you to understand? You can stand right here from this pulpit. You can stand from a national pulpit and declare the living Christ. And people don't believe it. Amen. But I come to declare to you today, amen, that he is alive. Amen. He's well. He has healing in his wings today. And he's here for you. He's moving in this service already. I want to get to the message that I feel like the Lord's got me, got give me to give to you today. But I want you to understand until we all can concur together that Jesus Christ arose. Amen. It's not a fairy tale. He didn't faint. He didn't go into a coma. The dogs didn't drag his body off somewhere. And he resurrected up somehow out of that. I want you to understand that he went into the heart of the earth and preached to those souls that were there. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. He arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave this morning. Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah. If you believe he's alive, give him the best praise you give him all morning long. Hallelujah to a risen Savior. He's not dead. Touch somebody say, he ain't dead. They're going to sing it one more time. We're going to worship him because he's alive. I don't want to be upbraided. I don't want him to be upset at me because I don't believe, because I do believe, amen. And I am for sure that he is alive because he lives. Does he live inside you this morning? If I don't quit, I'm going to stay here. Does he live in that? I come by to tell somebody, if he lives in you, you can live also. Amen. He got up, you can get up today. Amen. I want you to understand, he got up victorious. His victory in a risen Savior that lives on the inside of you. Sing that before I preach that. Because he lives, I can say tomorrow. Because he lives, all he is great hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give our praise and worship team, choir, and everybody a big hand for helping us this morning. Reach down, pick up your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke. I have two different passages of scripture I want to read to you today. With much wrestling, have I wrestled with the Lord because I really wanted to stay away from uh, uh, this particular subject because everybody seems to be preaching on it, but I really felt led of the Lord to come here. Amen. I really don't like the doomsday preachers. Amen. I just tell you this: uh, if if, I, if when they write all those books and 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 then they miss it, I think they ought to have to give the money back. Amen. 
I don't know how many millions of dollars one preacher made off in blood moons, amen. And you know what? The blood moons come and went. Nothing happened like he said. I think y'all give the money back, amen. And I don't like to scare people, amen. I don't want to scare nobody, amen. I want you to be ready, though. This is a message of readiness. Luke chapter 12. While you're turning there, we're going, to be look, we're going to be looking at Luke 12 and Luke 17. I'm going to try to marry these two scriptures together. But I want to commend you on your giving. We were really close to our goal of $5,000 that we were going to uh, give to a pastor in our district, amen, that is in dire straits and dire needs. I told a fellow on the phone the other day, and he knows the need, and he knows, he knows what I'm doing. And I told a fellow, I said, there's going to be some people when they find out what I was really doing, they're going to be so ashamed of themselves that they didn't give. Amen. And although we are, we are really close to our goal, if you want to give more above what we've got, we still need some money. Amen. I, I think I got, I think I got $31,000 and I need, I, I really need about nine more thousand dollars to do it correctly. Amen. And I'm reaching out to other churches and other people that's going to help. And that man hung the phone up from me, and he called me back in about five minutes. And he said, I done got shamed of myself, preacher. I'm going to send you $1,000. I'm putting it in the mail today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I wouldn't get up here and ask you for a penny for me, but I ain't ashamed to ask for this fellow because he really needs help. Luke chapter 12. Thank you for your giving, though. I appreciate it. I'm telling you, Mount Vale Church of God raised $5,000 just like that to help somebody. And you know what? That means that Christ lives on the inside of you, that you're not stingy, that you love people and you want to help people. Amen. Luke 12 and 54. If you're there, say amen. Look at somebody right next to you and say, if it wasn't for you, I'd be the best looking person here today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I see some elbows flying. There'd be a fight at your church. We'll do marriage counseling tonight before church. Everybody needs, I'll be here about 4.30 waiting on you. 54. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. And when, you, and when, when ye see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it cometh to pass. You hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it? that you do not discern this time. Luke chapter 17. If you want to turn over that real quickly while you're already in the book of Luke, just flip up there about five more chapters. I'll give you just a second to get there. This is the words of our Savior. Verse 26, and it said, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed all, them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they, they bought, they sold, they plant, planted, they builded. But the same day that, the, that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Stretch your hand toward me and pray with me. Father, let the Word of God become flesh in this place and dwell among us in our hearts. Let faith come by hearing, hearing by the Word. God, don't let anybody leave this place today. God, unprepared to meet you. And God, no, don't ever let us lose our readiness, Lord. Let us live as if this is the moment you're coming for. We see the signs and we stand waiting and looking at the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll give you praise, glory, and honor for all the things you do in this service today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Now look at somebody and say, I dare you to come back to church tonight. How many is praying that Leonard to get saved and come back tonight? If he gets saved today, he'll be back tonight. Amen. That's what we're praying for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus said you can discern the, the, you can discern the sky and you can discern the earth, but you can't see what's happening around you to understand the times that you're living in. Amen. And, and, and I, I really have. I've shied away from this for weeks on end. The Lord's really been dealing with me about this message for a while. And I've kind of ran from it some because everywhere you turn it on, amen. And it's why that the COVID is bringing on the end times and it's why this and why that. And you know something, I want you to understand, I don't want to go out on a limb. I just want to go out on what the Word of God says, amen. You can go out on a limb and you can look foolish if you want to, amen. Some people make millions of dollars trying to scare you, amen, to sell you a book, amen. I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to tell you the facts and the truth. 
amen, of what the Word of God says. Jesus said in verse uh, in, in Luke 17, said, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. When I, when I read about the days of Noah and the days of Lot, I see the striking parallels of the times that we live in. Amen. When you read the prophets, the writings of Paul and the words of Jesus, and, and then turn to the news, we see the Scriptures begin to come to life. Amen. In the days, amen, of Noah, wickedness was abounding. It was in every man's heart. It was on every man's mind. And as we turn on the television and we begin to look and we begin to see the atrocities and the hate that's in this world, amen. Can I tell you this? I sat right in this sanctuary yesterday and I, I did a wedding, amen, for a, 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 for a young couple. And there was a young black man that was here with me and he and I hit it off. And we were talking and I was telling him, I said, son, I had some ideas when I was your age. I said, they weren't good ideas. I said, the last, really and truly, amen, famous last words of a, of a redneck and a hillbilly is watch this, amen. You've had some ideas that wasn't all that good in your life. And I said, and if you follow after the mob, I said, they don't care. I said, the people that's inciting the riots, amen. I said, they don't care about the young black men that are losing their lives, amen, in the midst of the stir and the trouble that we're in. All they're looking for is to divide the country. I personally do not know one person, amen, that is a racist. And if they are, they won't admit it to me, I guess, maybe. I don't know. But I want you to understand, if you watch the news, amen, and you see how that hatred is being put into the people, amen, it is the very opposite of God. For if we can describe God in one word, it is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him. I want you to understand something. We need to look around at the signs of the time. We don't need our head in the sand and say, well, I hope things get back to normal. I hope they don't. I hope the Lord comes back before the day's out and we get out of this mess. Somebody say amen. Amen. Matthew 24 and 44 said, Therefore be ye also ready. Look at your neighbor and say, You ready? Hey, you know something? When we get ready to go on a trip, me and my wife, we do this every time. We tell the biggest lie it ever was. We do. We say, We ain't going to pack as much this time. Now I got to give that guy extra $20 because he thought he's back out trying to carry enormous luggage. And mine too, praise the Lord. <laughs> but you know what we do? We prepare. What if, and you know something, can I tell you this? I got this fan. I got this fan. It's under my bed. And that thing has got more miles on it than your Ford or Chevrolet ever thought about having. I've had it all over the world because I can't sleep without a fan. I bought the little adapter so you can plug it up to 220. Well, even on the boat, when I, if I go on a cruise, I take the fan with me. Why? It's uh, I, Because I'm used to it. But I want you to understand something. Amen? Uh, we're always packing things and we're getting things. And just in case, let's take this. And just in case, let's take that. And then the next thing you know, I'm trying to get on the airplane. And they're saying, you're 18 pounds, overweight. And we're trying to figure out what we could do without what we don't need. But the thing is, is we're trying to be ready for the trip. Amen? And I come to declaring to you today, I I feel like that most of the church is not ready. Amen. Jesus said, be ye also ready. It's time for us to get our affairs in order. Amen. Come on, let me preach a little holiness to you this morning. It won't hurt you. It'll do you some good. It's time for the church of the living God to get some things out of their life that they know that they know that they know is not right. I shared with my Sunday school class, I said, when I first got saved, I said, there was things in my life that God allowed for a season. And as I began to grow, God began to call them out, amen, and I began to lay them down, and as God revealed it to me, I got it out of my life, and if God speaks to me today, I'll get it out of my life, amen, I want you to understand, Jesus is calling, what's he saying to us this morning, he said, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh, it's time for the church of God, and the church of the living God, to be ready, I want you to, we're not limited to, amen, the church of God's not the only one going in the rapture. Amen. I want you to know that John saw in a vision in Revelation chapter 7 and he said, I saw all kindreds, tongues, and nations standing around the throne, a number that no man could count. So I want you to understand, all, everybody is represented there, but we must be ready for the Lord to come. How many ready this morning? We should live like he's coming right now. Amen. Amen. The next earth shaking event could very well be the coming of the Lord. Luke 21, 28, and said, when these things begin to come to pass, when you see all this stuff, as it was in the days of Noah, wickedness was abounding. 
we're living in a wicked and perverse world right now. And we see all these things come to pass. And look, they look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. We ought to be walking around looking up. In the Sunday school lesson this morning, we was talking about the little woman that was bowed over. You know what she found? She wasn't looking for her healing. She was finding all them quarters and nickels and dimes that you dropped and putting them in her pocket. She was looking down. She wasn't looking up. Amen. But I want you to understand, in the world that we live in, I, I told my wife yesterday morning, we just woke up. Right, I woke up and woke up and I reached over and I thought I'm going to turn on the television just for a second to catch the local news. And I picked it up and I aimed it toward the TV and I throwed it down. I said, I can't deal with it today. I don't want to hear their lies. I don't want to hear their mess. I don't want to hear their propaganda. And, you know, I, I told somebody the other day, I said, everybody that died of COVID didn't die of COVID. Amen. They tried to make it a pandemic to scare the people. Amen. I come to declare to you this morning, for the Lord himself hath not given you a spirit of fear but power and love and of a sound mind and I, I want you to know something today if you'll think with me just for a moment look around you when you see these signs and the things that are happening in this world look up for your redemption it's drawing nigh, children of God don't be afraid touch your neighbor and say don't be scared <laughs> Hebrews 9 28 so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him. Jesus said, be ready. He said, watch the times. It's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews said that for them that look for him shall he appear. And I'm afraid the church is not looking because they're watching too much stuff on television. Amen. I'm not talking about bad shows. I'm talking about I'm talking about I'm talking about the news. I'm talking about those things that are prepared to captivate your mind. I believe it's I believe it's an instrument of Satan to keep your mind off the fact that the Lord is coming. Amen. He said, "Look up for your redemption." When you see all these things start happening, start looking for the Lord. You know, we're looking for the cure to the COVID. We're looking to fix all of the racial injustice and I think it needs to be fixed yes and amen I don't believe you ought to hate nobody for their skin color I was in Dallas, Texas and I'd never been treated with such disdain amen because I was a white man I didn't like it and I don't know I don't think nobody else wants to be treated that way and I don't want nobody treated like that but I want you to understand if you got your mind on social injustice if you got your mind amen on the COVID if you got your mind on the election amen if you got your mind on how crooked the politicians are you're not looking up. He said, when you see all these things, don't worry about what's going on. Look, identify it for what it is and know that your redemption is drawn. Know that soon there'll be a sound of a trumpet. Know that soon the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say amen. Woo! We're closer today than we was last week. I'm surprised we're here. I thought for sure he'd done been back. Somebody called me up and they said, oh, God. I said, what is it? I thought somebody died. That's when they call on God when somebody dies. They said we're in the middle of the tribulation. I said we're not in the tribulation. They said, how do you know? I said, because I'm still here. I said, Jesus is going to come and get the church before the tribulation. Come on, somebody. If you believe it, you ought to give him praise. You ought to lift up your hand and say, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Good God, help me, Jesus. Ah! I come to tell you he's coming. I come to declare that lift up your head. Your redemption, daughter. I come to tell you, get it right with God. Woo! I ain't going to get to finish my message towards the world. Pray for me. I wouldn't act like this at Walmart for $1,000. My God, can you feel that? Can I, can I teach this for a second? Do you know what that is? That is a, a strong witness of the Spirit that the words that came out of my mouth are truth. Yea and amen. He is coming. And you better be ready. How many ready this morning? Woo! 
If I can, I'm going to try to move. I don't know if I can. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw the wickedness of man. Was great. And I was going to behave this morning. I've done scared more visitors often. Most people get in a year. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only on evil continually. Do you know that God is monitoring your thoughts? Do you know that God sees what nobody else can see? Do you know that God is taking record? Hey, I heard they, I heard they banned Elmer Fudd. That wascally wabbit. He was hunting wabbits. He wasn't shooting black or white. Or, he was just shooting wabbits. Yosemite Sam, he's pretty upset about it too. And I say this, you can ban all that you want to. You can ban flags and burn flags. You can do it, but, but it's never going to stop evil. Only thing that stops evil in a man's heart is Jesus Christ and him crucified. The only thing, it's the only thing that will change a man's heart. And I got one for you. If we're going to ban, if we're going to ban Yosemite Sam, then we need to ban some of them songs that's cussing and hating on cops. Amen. If we're going to ban, let's ban some of them nasty video games of drugging and thugging. Amen. Let's ban. If we're going to do it, baby, let's do it. You can't be one-sided on it. We got to get it all out, but it ain't going to fix society. I want you to understand, ban everything you want to, but the only thing that will change a man's heart is the blood of Jesus Christ through redemption and the power of the cross help me out this morning. oh you coming to help me he's trying to he come to preach me to death that's what he come to do amen what what watch I, I gotta slow down just a minute maybe I don't but I'm gonna try verse 12 Genesis 6 and 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus said, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. In the times of his coming. Did you see? I, I, I try not to see. Can, can I? Maybe I'm going to get in trouble right here. I might get kicked off. I may be in Facebook jail for the night's out. But can I say this? I hate the atrocity that happened to that man. And I'm telling you right now. Somebody needs. Somebody needs. Somebody needs to pay for what happened. It'll never bring that man's life back. And no matter what he did, he didn't deserve to die. And he left this world and he was crying for his mother. And it broke my heart, amen. It broke my heart because I knew he was near to death. And when I found, I, I've sat beside him many a person as he's about to die. And I heard them as they cried out for their mama. And they cried out for their daddy just before they left this world. My daddy was saying, I asked my daddy, I said, are you hungry? He said, I'm starving to death. He said, my mama's in the kitchen. Tell mama what I want to eat. He didn't live another day or two after he told me that. And my heart was broke. But tell me why. Tell me why young men and women, amen, you got the right to protest, but why are they sending young men with the, and, and, and inciting riots and violence, and they'll walk off, and they'll go back to their family, and then babies is dying out there, and somebody shot them, and they thought, and the whole world was filled with violence in the days of Noah, and Jesus said, as it was in that day, it's going to be in the day of my coming. I come by to tell somebody, gird up the loins of your mind, turn your back on sin, run toward God for everything it's worth hold on to the Lord get it out of your life live looking up holding on to the cross and wait and see what this old man's telling you the Lord is soon to come if you believe it give him praise <laughs> Noah the preacher of righteousness preached all those years while working on the ark and saw all his family saved 
Thank God Noah reached his family. And it's your, it's your responsibility to reach your family. Genesis 19, 14, and Lot went up, or went out and spake unto his sons, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. You can talk to people everywhere. And you can tell them the Lord's coming and they act like you're crazy. I was talking to a man at Walmart. He cussed every breath. He was, I, you know, I, I'm glad you didn't hear what he said. And when I, began to, when I began to talk to him about the Lord and the saving grace of Jesus, he got all religious on me all at once. And then he started saying, oh, I don't have to go to church. I'm a good Christian. And my mama told me I didn't have to go to church. And it's just have your faith in the Lord and it don't matter. I said, it does matter, sir. It really matters how you live. Because if you're living like the world, you're not looking up. Amen. If you're walking in talking like the world, you don't belong to Christ. I come by to tell you, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I want you to know no excuses from this pulpit. We will tell you the truth. We love you. We're glad you're here. But it's time that the church get her act together and look up and wait for the hastening of the coming God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 19, I'm going to hurry. And while he lingered, y'all come on to the music, hurry, get up here because I, I don't know when it's going to quit. And when he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon his, the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto them. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. While Lot hesitated, the angels grabbed him. It's not easy to get people out of sin. I, you ain't going to shout on this, so just don't even worry about it. I ain't worried about it. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Your Bible recorded that every man's heart was on wicked continually. He said, as it was in the days of Lot. I'm not here to be mean. I come to declare a word of truth to you. God didn't make nobody gay. Thank you, Ricky Hickey. Me and you concur, this is the truth. He said, one of the signs that you know that I'm coming back is they're taking over. Hey, it amazes me. Please don't get mad at me. It amazes me that we had 418 different genders. And some don't know how to identify as neither one. But when the COVID hit, it was only two genders again. Let me think a little bit here. If you got a problem and you don't know, go to the bathroom. I'm going to take a peek and come back. That's who you are. Help me, Jesus. God didn't make no mistake. But what, 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 look what he said. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. After that they came in and tried to rape the angels, bring them out that we may know them. And we're living in a society that ever embraces it and says it's all right and we don't hate nobody. Amen. I got friends that way. I ain't mean to them and I don't want you to be mean to nobody. I'm not empowering you to go out and hurt nobody. You'll never win them to God if you're mean to them. But I want you to understand, truth sounds like hate when you hate the truth. And the truth of the matter is, amen, God didn't make nobody that way. It's a sign. It's a spirit that's been unleashed in this world. And we ought to look and not say, well, bless their heart. No, we ought to look and say, hold your hand up. Live for God. The Lord's coming back. Look at the sign. Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. He's here. He's here. Let me tell you what he's here for number one for. Number one, the Spirit of God is in this house to save the lost. He came, he came seeking. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you're lost today or you're backslid, listen. I'm not here trying to scare you. I'm here to try to encourage you to come and lay it all down at the altar and go with us when the coming of the Lord happens. And it won't be long as it has been. The Lord shall come. Number two, he's here for the fearful. He's here for those that are fearful. People call me. I'm sitting on my porch with a gun. I'm in my house. I'm locked up. I got my AR. What you going to do? I said, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. 
I don't want to shoot nobody. I'm going to bed. I'm not worrying about it. And for those that are fearful in these times, those that are afraid right now is your opportunity. Heads is bowed, eyes is closed, prayer. Saints of God are praying. Prayer walkers are coming. If you're lost, let me invite you to come to this altar. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Would you come? I want you to understand. Somebody said, I'll just stay and go through the tribulation. I'll get my head cut off. No, if you can't serve God now, while the grace of God is here, while the power of God is moving, you'll never serve Him through the tribulation. Come now. Let's get it right with God. Wake up. Amen. Jesus said, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Be ye also ready. I wasn't going to do this. I promised myself I wasn't going to yell and sweat and holler. For those that are living in fear of what's next, there's peace for you today. Would you come? Would you just get out of your seat and say, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who holds the future, friend, but I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future, friend. Would you come? And would you commit your life and your heart in these uncertain times to a certain God? His name is the Son of God. His name is Jesus. And He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Would you come? Nobody looking. Saints of God pray. The Spirit of God is dealing with you, sir. Would you step out of your seat and give your whole heart to God? The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, ma'am, that's what's touching you right now. That's what's calling you out of darkness. That's what's saying go to the altar. Obey what the Spirit of God is saying to you this morning. Pray, saints. Some hanging in the balance this morning. Give me some men over here. Help our brother pray. Come on. Saints of God, pray. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I come quickly. I see the wickedness in the earth, and I know your heart, saith the Lord. Come today, and I will abundantly pardon. I will forgive all of your iniquities and be ready for my coming, for my coming is soon. Somebody give God a good praise in the house. Hallelujah. Would you come? Would you come? Come on. The Lord's drawing. The Lord's moving. The Lord's touching. Would you come? Hurry. Listen, don't be ashamed of the Lord. Just if you need something, run today. Don't wait. Run today and get it right with God before He comes and you are left. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And the word Come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. 
blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. In the word of our testimony. In the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony. The word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony. The word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony. The word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Word of our testimony, word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The word of our testimony, the word of our testimony. Word of our 
That's what I love about Sundays. We get to do it twice. And so for some of us, we get to do it three times. So come back tonight at 6 o'clock, and Brother Dylan is going to pray for us. Amen. Amen. How about this? Amen.